Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, a Cadence Independent Media production. Today we are doing something that I learned about on this show. Cotton balls in your floor tom. Alright, so experimentation day. I love these topics that occur because someone wrote to us and asked us to explore it or explain it or to figure it out if it works or not, you know, what it is. Thanks again to our presenting sponsor, Promark by Diderio, for keeping us in sticks, particularly Rebound 5A Acorns uh, that I'm going to use today. We lucked out with this drum, having it in the shop. I've had this drum for a while. It's a 14 by 12 inch deep floor tom from a wonderful shop that I'm sorry to say is no longer there anymore called Drummer's World in New York City. Uh, this is a nesting drum, and for those of you who aren't familiar with that, it splits in half in the center so you can put the rack tom inside of it. And what this means for us today is we can go through a lot of iterations of cotton balls in your floor tom without having to take the head off every time. And it also means that the tuning will stay exactly the same because we're not going to touch any lugs. So there will be no movement whatsoever. It'll be exactly the same for every single version. I feel like everybody out there is trying to get a good sound out of their drums, and one of the fussiest drums can be the floor tom, depending on what you're going for. And there are a lot of options for muffling or controlling sound, and particularly boosting fundamental and controlling sustain. Um, this goes all the way back to like things with foam around the edge and double ply heads and hydraulic things, all sorts of stuff that are for sculpting the sound to make it easy to use, to record well for live stuff, all those things. And I had not actually heard of this technique before until it was brought up by commenters. It seems that the, the person that people reference the most is Benny Greb, um, amazing drummer who has a great floor tom sound incidentally, um, as doing this. And all it is is putting loose cotton balls like you'd buy at a drugstore inside the drum to basically control the sustain of the drum and get you kind of like a slightly tighter sound without a muffled sound. It's still got tone, it's still got sustain, but it's a little more controlled and almost like pre-EQ'd a little bit. So what we've done here is we've set this drum up with a clear bottom head so we can actually get a view from inside of the drum through the bottom of how these are behaving and a single ply coated batter, UV1 on the top, G1 on the bottom, and I tuned it for as much resonance and sustain, almost like a problematic amount of sustain possibly, as I could. We actually even put legs on the drum that are designed to add to sustain, so we went as far as we could in that direction um, so that this will be as noticeable and dramatic as possible. Um, as you can see, we also have a SM57, on the drum because there's a certain amount of tone, especially in recording or also in live situations, that's present only in the close mics. And then attack that's only present in the further mics. So you're gonna get kind of a combination of what you might expect in a live situation or in a recording situation for that matter. So first things first, what does this drum sound like by itself? Nothing in it, just wide open. All right, so that's the sound of the drum. The bottom head is somewhere between a minor third and a fourth higher, which again, I did for the sake of getting the most sustain out of it. I wouldn't normally put the bottom of a floor tom pitch that high, but we're going for extremes a little bit here to make sure that this is super clear and we get the most sort of information out of this experiment. So we're gonna do, starting with zero, we're gonna go up one cotton ball at a time until we get basically until the drum doesn't work anymore and we'll see how many it takes before it doesn't sound like a drum anymore.
All right, we got one cotton ball on there and we're gonna kind of run through these because I don't think it's gonna change a whole lot until we start to get a few of them in there. And if we run into anything that starts to feel really different or worth mentioning, we'll stop and talk about it. And also don't forget to stay till the end of the video where we're gonna do a quick run through from zero to maximum so you can hear the comparison side by side. I'm starting to notice something happening acoustically here at around the three cotton ball threshold. And it's subtle, it's real subtle, but it is actually starting to change the sound a little bit. The cool thing about this process uh, is that it doesn't change the feel of the batter head, which is really cool. It feels exactly the same, but I'm starting to hear a little less sustain. I'm starting to hear a little more punch in the tone of the immediate attack of the drum. Um, and yeah, it's just cotton balls. It's crazy. So we're going to keep it going. Here goes four. We've gotten to six now, and it actually sounds really different where I'm sitting, um, and also in the microphones. And this uh, this is a good time to talk about going back to the way that muffling works. Like we've talked about tape in the past and other things. Where on the head it is makes a huge difference. And we're working now with something that is actively affected by the playing of the drum. It moves around because they're just loose in there. And they don't do the same thing in the center of the head as they do at the edge of the head, just like a big piece of gaff tape is going to have a different effect if it's in the center than if it's at the edge. Now, a curious thing that we noticed when we were first sort of like figuring out what this was going to do uh, is that if you put the cotton balls at the edge and then you play the drum a bunch, like, you know, for 30 seconds or a minute and really hit it hard, the cotton balls all migrate to the center of the head and stay there, um, whether it's two of them or 10 of them. And the thing that is interesting about that is that if they're at the edge of the head, they're going to be affecting overtones more. And if they're at the center of the head, they're going to be affecting the fundamental more because that's like physically where the presence of that vibration is at. And for the purposes of this experiment, it seemed like the better sound was with them in the center of the head. We kind of, we tipped the drum a little bit, tried to keep them at the edge and played it. And having them in the middle was definitely the sound that I was expecting to happen that would be desirable. So when you put them in the drum or say like you bring your drum to a gig and it's in a case and the cotton balls are in there, they're going to be all over the place when you set up and there isn't really any great way to get them to the center of the head other than just playing the drum a bunch. But know that inside of a little while, they're going to end up in the center. Um, and then basically 
you've got your sound, they're gonna stay put. Now, right now, we're starting to experience a little bit of what we were talking about earlier as being uh, like a gated sound, which is to say that like the resonance is happening the way you would expect, and then there's a certain moment where it drops off. And that's the shutting of the gate, basically. And that's a nice thing to have in a tom. In fact, in a lot of larger clubs, sometimes they will put uh, like digital or like, like in the in the signal chain a kind of gate that means that if you hit the drum really hard they get that sound and then it cuts off um which is super important sometimes for just the continuity of the sound on stage especially if it's a really loud show or if there's a lot of resonance on stage that also means that super low dynamics are not going to have the same kind of articulation and presence because they will be underneath the threshold of that gate and we haven't reached that with this drum yet. It's working. You know, like I'm hitting it hard right now, but it also is still working at a lower volume with six inside of it. If we had 16 in there, it probably would just sound like a pillow. I mean, we're going to find out. All right, I think we've reached a kind of threshold here where we're starting to get diminishing returns, which is to say that hitting the drum now pretty hard, the tone is very short, which is not a bad thing, but any more than this, which is 10 cotton balls in the center of the head, uh, I think is just going to start to make the drum not resonate anymore. We're going to throw some more in there, but this is sort of like the max out point to me. Um, but it's not just because the sound is getting short. The fundamental is starting to get muffled and the overtones of the batter head are starting to become prominent in a way that for me isn't great because the whole reason we started doing this was that we wanted fatness out of the drum and tone and control. And we've jumped over to the point now where the actual central sound of the drum is starting to get diminished and the sort of bright zingy stuff on the batter head is becoming... I don't know, just too much. There's too much of it compared to the central kind of fatness of the drum. Now, it goes without saying, just like any of these things, uh, your results are going to vary for sure. Um, this is this drum in this room with this setup, these heads, me hitting it, all that stuff. So even if you just have a 16 versus a 14, the behavior is going to be different, but the physics of it is not going to be different. At the end of the day, these things, if the drum is sitting flat, are going to want to be in the center of the head, and there's going to be an amount of them that's good, several amounts, and then there's going to be a point where it's going to start to stifle the drum. And depending on how hard you hit, depending on the room you're in, the style of music you play, there's a lot of different ways for this to go, which is why experimentation is where it's at, and especially inexpensive experimentation, like a bag of cotton balls from the drugstore. It's a really inexpensive way, similar to the bass drum felts, where you don't have to blow a bunch of money, you don't need a really specialized product. This is just about trying to find a sound and trying to find ways to get that sound and then keep that sound in some way that's consistent. And if you find a number of cotton balls that works in your drum with the heads you like, in the places you play with your sticks and your music, then you can shut them in there and you're good to go, no matter what. So. Let's put the rest of them in there and see what that does. 100 pure cotton cotton balls. <laughs> uh, all right. You're gonna wanna spread them around the head. Spread them around, you're gonna get even, even coverage.
Okay, so obviously this is comic relief for sure um, and sounds ridiculous, but it is actually a good illustration from below uh, how much more motion there is in the center of the head than there is at the edge, which is why if you have a few in there, they want to be in the center because that's where the larger motion is at and at the edge, the overtones are playing for longer and want to move it toward the fundamental. Um, yeah, so 100 cotton balls is, is definitely too many. Um, <laughs> But uh, I found some really great things somewhere between like three and eight that were actually super usable um, and that I probably will use in the future. I've had experiences recently with backline kits and studios, particularly where the sustain of the floor tom was overwhelming. And because of new uh, kind of technology in floor tom legs and brackets and whatnot, my normal tricks for getting the drum to be dead or like hanging a weight on it or a stick bag, they didn't do anything. And I ended up like gaff taping moon gels to the rezzo head, which I never do, like in the center of it and all sorts of like detuning it intentionally, like taking lugs out and stuff to try and get it to just have a shorter sound. Um, and this seems like a really effective thing for both that situation and also if you use um, like rim mounted floor toms or just like rim mounted large toms where you can't do anything with the legs or the mounting system to alleviate that sustain. If you want to have a look at that sort of deep dive on muffling externally uh, floor toms to control sustain, that's back in the first season, episode 17. We've gone through kind of all the sounds that we could get out of this thing um, without changing tuning or anything like that. And if we had changed tuning, there might have been some other variables. Um, but let's talk real quick about sort of the drawbacks of this method. And they're minimal, but they are frustrating. And it's basically that... We don't have easy access to the inside of a normal drum. We have this nesting drum here, luckily, which is just made this whole thing a whole lot easier. But if you've got both the heads on your drum and you're trying to figure out the right number of them to use and you have to take the head off every time, it, I mean, even getting the same tuning, you know, you can do it, but it's a hassle. You know, it's going to take a long time. It's going to take a lot of fussing around. Um, we've heard of people pushing cotton balls through the vent grommet on the side of a floor tom. Um, we were not successful in making that happen with the ones that we have. I guess we, you, know, you could tear them apart or try and like force them through there. Similarly, kind of a lot of trouble to do. So if you are a person who doesn't have to change the sound of your drums that often. If you use one sound most of, if not all of the time, this could be a totally useful thing for you. If you have to change a lot all the time, which is my situation, it's less usable than external things like tape or hanging things on the floor tom legs, that kind of thing. Um, because that's a quick fix that I can do at a gig or a studio without having to take anything apart. And I've definitely never been to a studio where they had nesting drums. so. At the same time, it definitely worked, and there were definitely amounts that made a really great sound and did exactly what was described. So it's definitely worth trying. It's inexpensive to try, and if you've got time to kind of fuss around with it, by all means, give it a shot, and I think you're probably going to find something cool. All right, now here's a recap. Zero cotton balls through 10. We'll leave the 100 cotton balls out. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that little button to get notifications next to the subscribe button down there so you can get all of our videos as they come. And thanks again to our presenting sponsor, Promark by Diderio, for keeping us in sticks and helping us sound good. Uh, please let us know if you use this kind of method for controlling sustaining your floor toms, or if you have any tips or tricks or ideas about the cotton ball thing or anything else that's more about controlling sustain than about just suppressing overtones, which is what you know we often end up doing when we're looking for, for a fatter drum sound and uh, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.